Hey, this is a demo on how to create a locator setup that allows you to have an object control another object and gives the controlled object a custom pivot that responds to the controlling object. Now, that's a really convoluted way to say, basically, when I move this hand, I want this weapon to move with the hand, but also to pivot along around this point so that it feels grounded to this character's shoulder. Another common example of uh, a way you could use a setup is when you need the bottom of the weapon to feel planted on the ground. Um, in that case, the custom pivot would be where the weapon is contacting the floor. You could also use this with a character holding a weapon in both of their hands, but where you're controlling the movement of the weapon mostly with one hand, while the other hand acts as more of a support. Before getting started with the locator setup, I recommend that you pose your hand and weapon roughly where you want them to be. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does give you a nice base to start from. Also during this demo, I'm going to say create a locator at some object a lot. If you know how to do this, or you have a script that does this, then you can skip ahead. If you don't know what that means or how to do it, uh, basically you are going to go to create and then locator. I recommend scaling it up just so that you can, you can see it. That's what a locator looks like. And then you are going to parent constrain it to the object where you want uh, to create a locator at. So for instance, let's say I want, I say, okay, you know, create a locator at this arm pivot. What I will do is I will parent constrain the locator to the object without offset. So I'm going to select the parent first, which is this uh, pull vector, and then the locator. I'm going to go to constrain, and then there's parent at the top. Go to the option box, make sure you check off, maintain offset, hit apply, and you'll see that this locator jumps right to the, where this pull vector is. All right, after that, you just need to delete this parent constraint and now your locator is at the object. Alternatively, you can use a Python script. There are a lot of them out there. If you just Google create locator at object Maya script, you'll probably get tons of really useful results. I also have a Python script available in the document that I created that accompanies this demo, but in case you're watching this video somewhere where the document is not you know, linked to it, then yeah, I recommend just a quick Google search. All right, with that out of the way, let's move on to the next step. You're going to need to do this step if your weapon is not rigged or does not have the option to have the character's hand follow the weapon or the weapon follow the character's hand. Some weapon rigs will have that option, usually on one of its controls somewhere in the channel box, maybe named like right hand to weapon or some sort of space attribute here. If you don't have that, then let's get something like that set up. First step is to create a locator at the weapon. Just gonna scale it up a little bit so I can see it. And I'm going to name this locator weapon underscore loc. I think that it's really important to have your locators named just because you can end up with a lot of locators on in your scene and they can be hard to keep track of when they're called locator one, two, three. Etc. Anyways, next we're going to parent constrain the hand to the locator. So locator is the parent, hand is the child, and we're going to parent constrain that with maintain offset checked on. And then using the outliner, we are going to make the locator a child of the weapon. If you don't know how to do that, basically you're going to select the locator in the outliner, and then while holding down the middle mouse button, just drag the locator to the weapon. And then you'll see here that the locator is nested under the weapon. So now when the weapon moves, the locator also moves. And because the locator is parent constrained to the hand, the hand will also move. All right, let's get to actually creating the locator setup. We're we're going to do is create two locators at the weapon. We're going to slide one of them down to where the hand is gripping the weapon. 
make sure your locator is big enough that you can actually select it since this is what you'll be using to animate. Let's call this one weapon underscore grip. This other locator, you're going to position it where you want your custom pivot. For me, it's going to be on this character's shoulder, right, right around there. And I'm going to call this pivot underscore point. Next, we're going to parent constrain both of these locators to our earlier made weapon underscore loc. So the weapon locator is the parent, and then these two are going to be the children. Again, we're parent constraining with maintain offset turned on. Next step, turn on your rotate tool and make sure that it is set to access orientation gimbal. Go into the attribute editor and above you'll see these tabs. Click on the tab that just says weapon underscore grip. And you're going to go to transform attributes, rotate order. Go down this drop down menu until you find a rotation order that makes sense, that works the best for you. Luckily for us, we found it pretty quickly. It's going to be this Y, Z, X setup. What I mean by um, a rotation order that works for you, I'm talking about how the axes line up really well with the weapon. It's very clean so that when we start animating, we're not going to get uh, weird gimbal issues from the get-go. All right, now that we have found our rotate order, we're also going to apply that to our pivot underscore point locator. And then with all that done, we're going to select both of our locators and put a key on them. At this point, if you have animation on your weapon already that you would like to preserve, you're going to instead use bake simulation, which is under edit, keys, bake simulation. Okay, now we're going to delete our parent constraints. And then we are also going to go into the weapon underscore grip locator and delete any rotation keys that we have on it. After that, we're going to aim constrain the weapon underscore grip to the pivot underscore point. So the pivot is our parent, the weapon grip is the child. And when you open up your aim constraint options, you're going to want maintain offset to be on, and you want your aim vector, in this case, to be uh, one in the y axis, and the up vector to be one in the x axis. Make sure your world, world up type is object up, and the world object is going to be your pivot underscore point locator, and then hit apply. We can test if this worked by moving this bottom op locator. And you can see that it is rotating so that it is always pointing towards the pivot underscore point locator, no matter how I move it. Next, we are going to parent constrain the weapon to our weapon underscore grip. So the weapon underscore grip is the parent, the weapon is the child going to parent constrain with maintain offset on. Next, we're going to lock out the rotation channels on our weapon underscore grip locator. This is because this locator setup will break if there are any keys on the uh, rotate underscore grip rotation channels. And when that happens, you have to reset up the whole thing and it's very annoying and tedious. So highly recommend simply locking these channels out. From here on out, you're going to use your weapon underscore grip locator to move the character's hand. And let's say you want to repose this hand or animate it regripping, something like that. Then you're going to use the weapon underscore loc, and you'll see that you can move it independently of the weapon underscore grip locator. Whereas if we did not have this weapon underscore loc uh, control, then you can o you would only be able to control the hand with this weapon underscore grip. So the hand pose would be stuck in whatever um, orientation with the weapon that you started off with. 
if you're in a situation where you would like your locator setup to move with a specific control, so for instance, with this example, I probably want the locator setup to follow this upper chest control so that the weapon is always following this upper chest control when I move it. Just makes my life a lot easier. Then after you have made up these two parent constraint to the weapon underscore loc, and before you have uh, done the custom rotate control on them, you're going to select the control that you want your locator setup to follow. And then in your outliner, if you hit F, then the outliner will take you to where that control is located. Then grab your two locators and middle mouse drag them to this control. Now you'll notice that when I move them or move the chest control, the locators don't move with it. That's because they're still parent constrained to the weapon underscore loc. So that is controlling them over, you know, this uh, parent child setup. And then we're just going to keep going with the steps. And then moment of truth. There we go. Now when I move this upper chest control, then all of this will move together. So that, you know, if I have the character go down and then come back up, then I don't have to manually animate these two locators to follow that movement. If you have any questions or if some part of this video is not clear to you, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, have a great time animating and I hope that this made your life just a little bit easier.